Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another video tutorial about Unity Basics. Uh, today we're going to do some C Sharp programming. We're going to do the C Sharp Basics because um, I assume not if everybody who's watching the videos knows how no C Sharp or knows how to program at all. So this is meant for those people who want to learn how to program. Um, I get a lot of questions like why do we need to program? Um, I'm an artist, I just draw pictures, why do I need a program? Um, it's simply put, you need it to get a job in the gaming industry. Um, well, not necessarily, but I don't know, it, it will help your case. Um, and as a game designer, it is part of the job, right? If you want to be a game designer, you know, need to learn how to program, period. It's simple as that, you need to know how. Even as an artist, you know, you need to know the basics, so you, so you don't have to bother like other people, like, oh, can, you, can you make me a script that does this or that? It just helps you when you know how. Um, and look at it this way, right? Children like age eight or nine are being taught right now how to program, visual programming. So in like 15, 20 years, they will know more about, about programming than you, which you probably don't want, right? So you need to learn the basics. At least you need to you need to be able to understand uh, basic coding and how it works. Which is exactly what we're going to do today. So we're going to make a very basic script, and I'm going to walk you all through the basics of of, uh, of programming and what it actually does, and how to uh, use it to enhance your gameplay or to, to create gameplay and all. So I I made a folder here called scripts. Just create folder. Not difficult, right? And then you go in there, and we're going to make a new script. We're going to call C sharp script, and I'm going to call this one coding basics. And I'm going to hit enter, which will open up my IDE. In this case, it's uh, Modern Develop. Uh, some people will have Visual Studio. It's fine. It doesn't really matter which one you use, because they both do the same. You you can even use um, Notepad plus plus or just Notepad if you want to. It's quite common. It, it works for everything, right? So, okay. Hope you guys can read it. I don't know how I can. My computer doesn't work anymore for some reason. No, um. So. This is C sharp. It looks a bit daunting, maybe, but it's really not. It's really simple. Well, it's not simple, but you get the idea, right? So, what we can do with C Sharp is create gameplay, which is what we're going to do. So, let's first start off, start off what's actually on screen. So, up here in line 4, it says public class coding basics uh, extends mode behavior. This part here means extends. Um, it just means that it it inherits stuff from the, from the modern behavior frame, framework. You don't have to know everything about it. You don't need to know the details. Just know that this means extends. That's it. Um, for those who know like PHP or even JavaScript, um, they use functions, and in C sharp we use voids. So it's just simple uh, to to realize void means function. It's the same. It does the same. It's really not a difficult, right? Okay, so then we go to void start and void update. Uh, void start is is run once when the game starts and updates run every single frame. Uh, but before we can actually start doing coding, you need to know what they do, right? For example, what's a, what is a class? What does that do? Um, it's very simple comparison would be that a class is a person, uh, and a person. Uh, knows certain things, has certain functions, like one, one person is a teacher, other one is a physicist or whatever, and they all have their own functions and they can do certain things. The cool thing about classes is that they can exchange information between one, one another, so we, you can have the uh, physicist uh, explain the teacher what uh, what the theory of general relativity is, right? So it's just a way of having uh, a clean code base and having everything exchange information if you want to um, you don't have to exchange information with classes you can just keep it like uh, to itself so it doesn't do anything with anyone else it's just a method of right so again void start and void update are default functions voids inside unity uh, inside most game engines and they are always there by default sometimes you don't even need them but in this case, I'm just going to leave it there. Right? So, people who know coding, um, or even people who don't know coding, may have heard the term of a, uh, a variable, or variable, depends where you're from. And it's just a simple uh, empty container in which you can put stuff in. B 
be it uh, a, a, a math formula or a simple text or even if it's just a number. In C sharp, ideally, you want to be uh, you want to um, tell the compiler or the game engine what that variable is, what kind of type it is. So you got a, base, a couple of basic ones. For example, you have an int, which means it's an integer, which means it's a whole number. So you can type here the number, for example. And by doing this, by adding a semicolon, you tell the compiler, okay, we will make a empty container called number, and it's of the type integer so the compiler knows okay i will expect a number a whole number without uh, a, a number after the decimal so you can fill it by type for example one so this container right now has the number one in it and that's it nothing more nothing more to it the other one will, will be float let's uh, let me call this one second number a float is a container container which has uh, numbers in it but they also include numbers after the decimal for example pi now what's really important about float is that you add an f behind it so you have the number and then you add an f which tells the compiler okay this is a float otherwise you'll get a massive compiler error and it won't work so if if it's a float add an f behind it and then you also get string which is just text right so you can using the uh, uh, semicolon column thingy, I've got his name. You can add text here. Uh, this is text by also closing it. Keep in mind that C sharp requires a semicolon. I cannot stress this enough and how often this will go wrong. Now you can really you can simply test it by just clicking again in Unity and see if you got nothing. If you don't get any errors, we got a, a warning. This is a warning, but that's fine. Um, because it's because we made it but we're not using it so it's like dude what the fuck as as long as it's not red you're in the in the clear right so if, if it's yellow it's fine so how can we see if this number or this text or whatever actually contains something right so how can you double check see if it actually works well they have a cool thing for that they well if you may notice here in the console you can actually print out stuff so we can type for you for example debug.log which will means that it will be put here in the console. We can just open brackets here, set a column, and then in between those brackets, we can tell you what do we want to print out in the console. In this case, I want to do number. That's it, right? Number. So it will print out in theory number one. That's it. Okay, we don't get any errors. Awesome. I'll just hit play, and nothing happens. Nothing happens for a reason because we made a script, it's in the asset, uh, asset folder. But it's not in the game. In order to get a, 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 a script to work, you need to put it inside the game, either by attaching it to an object or an empty object or the current terrain or whatever. It's like, it has to be somewhere. By, I've got my terrain selected, for example, right now. I'm just going to drag it on here, on the inspector, which will add it as a component. So our, our current script, our coding basics, has now become a component of terrain. And again, components is very important that you keep that in mind. Now when I hit play, I get a 1. Let me open the console here for a second. You can see it. 1. Perfect. Let's take the other ones as well. So for example, we now got the second number. Just going to hit play again. And now we get 3.14. Perfect. And now of course you can also do my text. This is text. See? Not that difficult, right? So now we can also add like add these numbers up. We can actually do it here in the debug, or we can make a separate variable for that. Now this brings us to the next topic, which means uh, which is uh, the scope. And what a scope is, um, it's really just not that difficult. For example, right? So this number here right now is in the scope of these two brackets. These two. So this number, this variable can be used from line 4 to line 24. Inside this class it can be used anywhere we want to. We can even use it in update or we, cre we can create our custom uh, function. It can be used inside all of those. If we were to put this number in my function start, then it can only be used in the start because the scope here is between these two brackets. So these brackets, um, they indicate the scope of a certain function or class. In this case, it's in this case, I kind of want to use it to be able to use it in my entire class, so I'm going to put it up here. 
but what if we have a number like the the outcome of these two added up do we want to use it in the entire class or just for like a printing out function in our in our console in this case I, I just want to do the last one so I'm gonna make a new new variable now it's important to know which type it, it, it is it will it will, it will be when we add 1 plus 3.14 we have a number of the decimal so by default it's a float so I'm gonna make it in a float oh. uh, just gonna call it add up or just you know whatever then we can say is then we can say number plus second number so we now add up these two on top of each other let's see if we don't get any errors we don't and now we can actually debug it again debug.log Add it up. And again, don't forget to sum a column. I'm just going to hit play, and then we should get 4.14. Perfect. So, what would happen if we turn this into an int, an integer? Do we get an error? We get a very big error. You can see here, because what we want to do is we want to put a float, so a number of decimals, um, into an integer. It's like, dude, I, I don't know how. So, it's just going to, it's like, nope. I'm not gonna do that. Of course, you can do a thing called uh, type casting, but that's something a bit more advanced, so we're not gonna do that. So again, the scope of the number, the int number, is in this entire class. It's in between these two brackets, but the float add up can only be used inside the start function, which means that that the scope is between line 13 and 18, and nothing more. Okay, so in Unity, there is one more type that's really common and it's called game object. Let's call it my game object. Like this. So, game object in this case is the same as int, floats, and string. It's a type, but it's a custom type um, it's, uh, for this game engine alone. Um, and in that game object, or my game object, we can store something in our current game. But we don't know how at the moment, right? So we're gonna get to the next one, which is called a public or a private variable. Ideally, you want to be, uh, you want to declare them all. Uh, what kind of type it is? Is it public or uh, private? And I'm, I'm gonna show you a difference, right? So I'm gonna make this public. I'm gonna make this one private again. And let's do this one private as well. And my game object will be public. So number is public and game object is public. So now when I go back to Unity, we don't get an error, and I click on my terrain, we now see here that they are accessible through the inspector. We can now actually drag something in my game object, which we can do really cool stuff with. So the difference is, if I now turn this one to private again, it's gone in a minute. There it is. It's gone. So public in this case means that we can access it through the inspector. But keep it, this is actually really important. When I change this one back to public and now I like change it down to like 800, it doesn't get changed in the code though. It's still the same. So the number doesn't really matter what it is. I can hit play. It will still be 800, and when I exit the game, it will still be 800. So that's something to keep in mind. If it's public, you don't really need to declare it. You could just leave it like this, for example. It will still be there, but the number will then be blank, so you can fill it in for yourself. So declaring a, a public uh, integer float, it's really useless. It doesn't serve anything besides just extra typing, which is not really that helpful. Right? So we have a couple of more of them. I'm going to show you a couple of them as well. So I'm going to add. I'm going to change my light here. I'm going to call this my sun. It's a little bit easier. So we're gonna make another one, another public variable. In this case, I'm gonna use the type light. So it's like, what, what, what does that even mean? You can use the component name. You could just check here for the component name. So in this case, the component name is light. So which can also be a type. So you could type here light, for example, and then my light, like this. It also is the same for, for example, uh, let's grab my control here. It's the same for the character control or rigid body or audio source. You can define the type by uh, based on the component name inside Unity. It's actually really helpful that you know this. In this case, probably my light, or public light my light. When I now go back to my terrain, we can only put here 
in my life we can only put a light in there and we can we can try to drag the uh, water for advanced reflection scene camera in there but it doesn't work because it doesn't have the component of the light so in this case when I drag the sun in there see we can actually do this because it has the component light and now we can do actually do some really cool stuff with this for example uh, let's do something really freaky because it's fun right so I'm gonna do something weird so just bear with me I'm gonna use this I'm gonna make this number here now I'm gonna use my floats second number and I'm and I'm gonna change that number every single frame and I'm gonna use that number to control the intensity of my son because you know why not so we can say here for example second number is and then we want a random number each time which can actually be done so we can say here random for example dot range which means that we have a between a number and a second number so minimum I'm gonna use flow uh, 0 and 1 do we get any errors no okay now just let's debug it and see which number we actually get second number I'm gonna hit play zero that's weird right that's odd why, why would they do that it's actually it makes sense right so we say here this this number here is a float second number is a float because we define it up here in line 7 but these two numbers here 0 and 1 they're both integers because we didn't tell them okay it's a float but just by adding the f in there 0 f and 1 f we now tell it okay now these two numbers are floats and now we should get a number between 0 and 1 so it's really important to know the difference as they are as they are right now they are integers which means that it can only go between 0 and 1 so well what is between 0 and 1 is just 0 by adding f we tell okay it's a float so again we test it okay that works fine now when we look at our light in this case the sun you can actually change everything in this component by using script in this case you can also change the color and the intensity and the bone intensity the shadow type even if you want to I just want to use the intensity so look at the name intensity so I'm going to use my variable name which is my light dot intensity I'm going to say a second number I'm going to show you what happens now it's going to be really funky we get a disco because this changes every single frame This is this is how you get motion sickness. <laughs> let's do this. Let's, let's not do this. Um, this part here is not very efficient though, because we first store it into the second number and then we use that number again to change the intensity of one light. We also just do it like this. So intensity. It's a bit faster, right? So this is more efficient, and, it's, and it still does the same thing. It still makes us sick, but it, it works, right? It works the same. You can also do that, of course, for the color. Let's, let's do my light again. Dot color. But color is a bit different. Um, of course, you could change it to like color dot uh, black blue. Let's do cyan. It will now be changed to cyan. It should be at least. You can see it here in, in the spectrum. The color is now changed. But what if you want to use a random number? That would be awesome, right? The problem is. Um, there are two colors in Unity, right? You've got the co color and color 32. Um, these two are completely different. Uh, the problem is with color, uh, color is between 0 and 1, and color 32 is between 0 and 255. It's just a different method of uh, putting it uh, or bringing it on paper. In this case, since we have a number between 0 and 1, I kind of want to use my color, regular color, this one. But that means that, that we will make a new color that, does, that doesn't exist yet because we only have a couple of them defined as you can see here so black blue clear etc but we kind of want to make a new one so what we have to do is, is just type here new color then we open the brackets you can say oh let's actually do this let's do it a little bit weird so i'm gonna grab this one color color you can actually see here which number we have right now and alpha um, 
it will be 255. Oh, sorry, one. Now you can also check the brackets, see if they closed. In this case, they do. See, I have no idea if this is going to work or not. It's going to be really funky. Yes. <laughs> that is weird. It works. Now, what if you wanted to use uh, Color 32? That's entirely fine. Of course, you can just use new Color 32. But then you can still use this number here, but then multiply by 255, for example. Let's see if it actually works, if I'm not lying. Uh, 255, and then we get 255. No idea this is going to work, it's not. In this case, it doesn't work. <laughs> that was my awesome idea. Of course, we could just do it manually as well. Let's do it manually quickly. Let's do 230. Oh, 230, 230, 230, 255. See the errors are gone, and now we have a color, a new color. So that's the main difference. But it's just the numbers. Uh, keep in mind though that when you compile, everything will be uh, brought back to between zero and one. So you might as well use color. This one is just as fast, right? Okay, so these are the very basics of them, extremely basics. So keep in mind public versus private. Um, it just depends if you want someone to be able to change certain um, values in the inspector or not, or should it be like hidden from prying eyes that can fuck up everything, which you don't want then. Um, let's do one more, because it's fun, I want to show a different method. I'm gonna add you a as to a point light right here. Let's put it up. I'm gonna make it a little bit. Let's make it really strong. There it is. Okay. Let's call this my torch or torch. You don't have to define the component uh, beforehand, you can also use a different method. It's again public, so we can add it in the inspe uh, inspector itself. So game object, and then it's called my torch. Oh, I'm going to show you sorry, two methods. So this, this opens up a slot for a game object, which case can be my torch, because this is a game object. It's, it's here, so it's game object by default. Oh, I can add it in here. There you go. Um, the downside of using the game object, it's 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 very broad, right? So you don't have these uh, specific component ready, so you need to do it yourself. So, for example, in the let's do it in a start. In here, you need to say my torch. Oh, torch. My bad. My torch. They need to get the component, which is literally called get component. But then it's when things get weird. Use these these brackets, and then you can say the type component type. In this case, light. Then you add these ones. Then you can access it by changing the intensity or color. Or again, you can just um, store it in, in a different variable, which would be in this case be light and then my second light or whatever, you know. You can still store it. Just keep in mind that the type has to be the same as the component that you're getting. So if it's if it's uh, light, then you need to declare it as light. If it's a rigid body, then they need to uh, do it as a rigid body, etc. So this is one method, this is the uh, slight, almost sexy method. Of course the sexiest one would be like we did here, with the actual type. Uh, but the other one is a bit more dirty. You can, say, uh, for example, do... Uh, let's do it like this. Let's call this a uh, light uh, torch. My torch. Then you can say game object. Because it's in the, in the hierarchy, then you can actually say it's find, then you can type the name torch. Oh, okay, actually, would work, would be nice. Then you, can, then you can do the same get component uh, light brackets like this. This is not necessarily bad, it's just very inefficient. 
because you, you can imagine if you have a, a very big scene a very big uh, and left like 16,000 game objects that has to go through through them all to actually find that the one torch so it's not the most efficient method of coding um, but it's valid right it's, it, it 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 works fine it works fine so these are the uber basics of coding in unity c sharp coding in unity um, I've made a different video uh, it's a cave level about uh, adding gameplay and adding triggers so if you're curious you can always watch that one uh, to learn more a bit more advanced coding um, and I'll do another one soon ish um, how to use coding to enhance the atmosphere in your game and uh, or in your level or whatever uh, but it will be done in a couple of weeks because I first have to do for do a workshop first and after that I'll actually uh, make it public so I hope this was useful I hope so at least um, yeah that was pretty much it so I'll see you guys again next time